This is the case of the unwanted Cabbage Patch doll. Now, the plaintiff claims she called off the doll deal less than 24 hours after making it and is convinced she deserves a refund. She claims she's furious with the defendant for treating her like this and is not about to let her get away with it, even for just $10. The defendant contends that she wouldn't accept a check, so the plaintiff gave her $10 to hold the doll until she returned with the rest of the cash. She states the plaintiff's decision to cancel cost her money, so she is not about to refund her deposit. Well, the question is, is the plaintiff due a refund? Let's find out now as Judge Wapner hears the case. Did you uh, offer to buy a doll from the defendant? Yes, I did. How much was the doll? Um, $75. 75 Yes. Okay. Did you pay 75 No. How much did you pay? I gave her a $10 deposit. All right. And then you decided you didn't want the doll? Yes. Why? Because I realized that I could get one for less than that. I didn't want to pay that much. Are you in the business of selling dolls? No, sir. I collect dolls. You collect? Yes, sir. What, why were you selling? Is that the doll you were selling? Yes, this is not the one that... Well, that's uh, not the one. No, but it's identical. It was identical to this one here. What did you do with the other doll that she was to buy? Uh, I ran another ad and I sold it for $65. Sold it for 65 Yes, sir. Did you buy another doll? Yes, I did. Same kind? Yeah. For how much? Um, 60 Okay. What do you know about this, sir? I'm just here for moral support. <laughs> okay, you hold her up. Okay. <laughs> and you, sir? Well, I was I overheard parts of the conversation that went on between the two. What was the conversation? Well, I, I recall her saying that uh, the deposit was non-refundable <coughs> and that, uh, that she would come back and buy the doll. You ever told that? No. Did you say you'd come back and buy the doll? Yes, I did. I have a receipt from her here. Um, right, let, me, let me see it. I also have a penny saver ad that she had her ad in. Right, let me see the, the yeah. ad. And I have something from the city of Orange from the um, business license division. Okay. From the what division? Oh. From the business license department. It shows that I did try and um, talk to her about it first, and then I also contacted the police department to find out what I could do the very next day. Police department? Yes. <laughs> Just it's to find out if I could do It's something. a civil matter. The police yeah. department's well, not going to... They they've got other things to do. They want to catch yeah. robbers and thieves. And well, can I say something? Um, her husband answered the door, and then he left the room, and I didn't see him after that. Okay. You're not claiming anything's wrong with the doll? No. No, nothing was wrong with the doll. Just changed your mind? You thought you could get it cheaper someplace else? Yes. Um, I went there. I read her ad in the Penny Saver. It came out on the 3rd of December, I mean of October, and I had to go to church that night, so I didn't get to her house until 9.30 that night to give her the money. Had you priced these dolls uh, before you... Um, in the stores, deposit? not really, because um, I was going to try and get one myself, but I found that I could How much are they at stores? About. You can get them for, I've seen the cheapest one I've seen is $26, and they've gone up to 30 something But I don't have the time to, you have to wait in line, lines in front of the stores, and I don't have the time to do that, so. Well, where did you to, get the one for 60 At Hobby City, in, um. A retail store? It's a, it's a hobby shop, a hobby... Is $75 an uh, unreasonable price for this No, stuff? sir. Cabbage Patch dolls with pacifiers are going for 75 And the reason why I sold the ones I had, I had four of them, and I sold them because my husband said I had too many dolls. <laughs> Wait, is the one with a pacifier cost more than the others? Well, I paid more for it. I paid 55 for this one. And you it, wanted to make a profit? Your Honor? The doll that I was going to buy didn't have a pacifier. It was redhead. It had braided ponytails and a little dress, and it did not have a pacifier in its mouth. Okay. Take a short recess. I'll come back and give you my decision. Is the plaintiff entitled to her $10 deposit, or is a deal a deal? We'll see what Judge Wapner thinks in just a moment. 
This is a very close case in the eyes of many of our courtroom observers, but it seems that the defendant would prevail if the decision were to come from this part of the courtroom. Let us get the critical decision now from the bench. Here is Judge Wapner. Remain seated and come to order. This court is again in session. Well, generally speaking, the law does not favor forfeitures. Now, if a, we had here a deposit if there's only a deposit to hold something and the receipt or the evidence was that it's non-refundable or didn't state that it was non-refundable, then the plaintiff would be entitled to the $10 back. On the other hand, if the deal was, I'm buying this doll for $75, I'm giving you $10 now and I'll pay you the rest tomorrow when I come pick it up. I think that's what it was here. You said you were coming back. He said, I'm, I'll be back tomorrow to pay for the doll. And the receipt says, receive $10 deposit for Cabbage Patch doll. Balance due, October 5, 84, $65, and it's signed. So it seems to me that that's what the deal was. And as I say, it's corroborated by the fact that she said, I'll be back tomorrow to pay the rest. So uh, since it was a contract to buy the doll for $75, $10 was merely a deposit for that. Uh, plaintiff is not entitled to have her money back. There's no reason for it because it's just a change of heart. That she could get it somewhere else cheaper. Judgment for the defendant. Mm -hmm. So the defendant prevails. The plaintiff in this case, Ms. Johnson, is on her way out of the courtroom. You left the $10 because of a time factor, as you said. Yeah. And yet, look what happened. You've now gotten all this time involved in coming to court, all over $10. Yeah. <laughs> has it been worth it? Yeah, it has. It was interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Has this know. taught you anything about leaving deposits? Well, I think next time I'll have my facts all together and not forget to tell them things. I forgot to tell him. You think you left out some critical yeah, things? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, well... Sorry. Unfortunate. Case is over now. Thank you very much, Thank Officer Burrell. Has some documents for you to sign. Now the defendant is on her way out. Of you look surprised. Did you think you well, were going to lose? I thought so. Yeah. I really did. But you know, I think that it was fair. She gave me a deposit, and I should keep it. Why do you object to your wife having so many dolls? <laughs> too many is too many. How many is too many? Well, quite a few. How many? Oh, 30, 40? Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> well, thank you very much. So that brings to a close this session of the People's Court for now. I'm Doug Llewellyn, thanking you for joining us and reminding you if someone files a lawsuit against you and yet you're convinced you're in the right, don't let that action intimidate you. The best policy is to go to court and stand up for your rights.